Good morning. Cold start. Chuck, 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 chuck. Away she goes. Castle to bed, and then we've got four fences to take down. At this rate, I need a flipping sheepdog. Fencers come tomorrow. Mean machine. What a lovely machine. You can see it's solid underfoot. Me and Kev are hopefully going to make the use of the frost and do some work on the hills where the fences are. That's right, skittery and wet yesterday. Hopefully the frost will stay around for at least the morning. Kev's coming down with the forklift. He's also dumped the tractor and trailer here, so I'll take that down to further down the field where we're going to be working. Over this bray here, there should be a digger. There she blows. It's pretty steep here. Right, I'm just going to get to work with the digger. Kev's going to pick up um, the winds that have been pulled out already, chuck them in that trailer and get rid of them. This is what I did the other day, not much, I didn't get too far, but yeah, just taking out these winds because that's where the fence sits. Again, I've forgotten my GoPro, so yeah, because I need two hands, I can't. I can't really film the digger action. My GoPro's on a magnet, so you usually just stick it there or stick it up the back there. Another wee bit done. Let's get this bit whacked out. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Leaving piles of winds lying about. Kev will uh, scoop them up. He's just been picking up posts that have been lying about with the forklift. Tell you what, since we've got a digger, I'm needing a tutorial from uh, the digger girl. Fire over to one of our videos and comment below and say, I'm needing a lesson. And while you're at it, go and subscribe. Fellow Scott, come on the Scots. Oh man, she makes driving a digger look, a doddle, makes it look an absolute breeze. Progress, 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 dig, 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 dig. Some mess you can make in a quick time, eh? I thought it was a long flipping morning. Clock's still an hour behind on the digger. Peace time an extra hour away. Flipping egg. That's more like it. Cup of tea, Scott Agri. I think if I put the brand in there, they'll give me a horse sprayer for half price. Even 1% off the bill for a horse sprayer would be nice. Here come the fencers. A lot of material on there, big bill. The frost just starting to come out now, so starting to make a wee bit of a mess. And that's the way it's going to be, unfortunately. You have to pick your roots down here because some bits over here are too steep. Wiggle round about and avoid the wet bits as well. Anyway, Kev's away to tidy up the winds that I've been pulling out and I'm going to go and pull some more out. Now I'm refueled on tea and digestive biscuits. Oh, is it soft in there? Nah, it's not too bad. It's where the gateway is soft, it's the lowest point. for a scotch egg. Yeah, beauty. Fueled up, cows checked, back to diggering. Charging on. Kevin and Dad are just ahead of me there. I'm just heading up to where they are with the digger now. Weather's looking horrible from tomorrow, so fencer guys are away putting all the strainers in. And then I presume tomorrow their track machine will come post chapper on track, so it puts a bit less pressure on the ground than their tractor does, so. You can see a couple of strainers they've thrown in there. So we'll keep the metal strainer there to hang a gate off of. The wooden strainer will be used to tension the, the fence from. If you tension a fence from one post um, and then hang the gate from the other, it means this one won't move and the gate doesn't throw off kilter. So that's why there's kind of two posts here now. They'll just put some wooden spurs across there to fill the gap. So I'm here with the digger. I'm about to go down there, up there, and then all the way up there to where Dad and Kev are right now. So they're clearing some space up there which is filled with rubbish. 
Fencer guys are away around the other side of that wood, putting in strainers. There goes the first bit of paint. Kev's got those big strainer stones away. I fished out a big stone. That's actually concrete. It's a strainer in this bit of verge here where we're putting a fence, so I'm trying to get it out. It took a bit of heaving and hoeing to get it out anyway. There we go, Kev's getting that away. Must be at least a ton and a half in there, but anyway, it was a big hole to get rid of. Well, Maybe 15 hours total in, and I've um, bent the bucket already. Nice one. Cool, man, that big uh, concrete block. Well, there's another bit of learning to add to the learning curve. Just a bit of pruning. Lovely. Quick check on these calves. Not really calves, are they? Some of them are not miles off of weight. That'll well, still be in a couple of months at least. Fencers have been and dropped off some Rylock netting. So everything we're fencing is going to be Rylock nets. One to stop those pesky sheep. There's a pile of stobs. There's a pile of old stobs. They'll all get chopped up just for burning in houses. They all get used for the fences. A couple of pallet of strainers over there. Post chopper tractor. A big old Valtran chopper on the back. There you go. Knoxfield Estate Services. That's who's putting the fences up. Anyway, there's been a calf born and there's some lambs born, so we'll fire along the road to yard one, see what's going on there. We've got some new lambs. We're just gonna fire them under the heat lamp because we've got it in the last set. <laughs> There's the calf that's been born. That cow, I wasn't that sure if it was in calf. It's late calving. Get a navel spray. Right, this is a coupler off of the forklift here, and it is not working. I think one of the ball bearings has got something stuck behind it. So I'm gonna go around with an o-ring pick and see if all of them are indenting or not. It obviously had something not quite right. <coughs> There you go, that's it working now. Obviously just had one of the ball bearings was stuck. This is not a one-handed job. I'm trying to push with my belly. Need a bigger belly. Kev's got all the silage here. We got the majority of the shed done the other day, so we've kind of just got a few bays left to do. We, what we do is we do two bays, then we swap. Anyway, we're getting there. There is the destroyed roof. We've ordered our tarpaulin now. Um, that's, we're gonna go down that route. Basically, it was just a really windy day and because we've taken the scratching area off that end, the wind just managed to catch at that end and ripped it right down the middle. Four bays, you can see where the light gets to. That's where the sheet over the top is missing because that stuff is all insulation and then there's a, a weatherproof sheet on top of that. We've got two of these sheds. They are on the list of things needing replaced. Um, these huts hold two and a half thousand birds. That volume of birds is really like minuscule in the egg, the egg game really. So, so getting an off-the-shelf designed shed at this size, impossible. So hopefully we'll be able to sort something out in the next 12 months. Update number two, um, I've hit my first phone cable with a digger. Nice one. All the washing's done, just need to go and fill an IBC now with water and disinfectant and soak the whole thing with disinfectant. But I need to nip along the road to yard two to dig a hole where I hit some phone cable yesterday. I actually didn't think it was phone cable that I hit. It was all just braided metal wire and it didn't have a cable in between it. It was a bit... Me and Kev both thought it was just a metal braided wire or a wire rope. So we just did nothing about it and buried it again. I've just dug up where I saw that wire yesterday. Anyway, the BT man's looked at it and doesn't think it's his. I just thought it was a braided wire rope, which BT man thinks that as well. So 
So I've not had it here. And the only other place we were actually digging was down there. Here it was just level enough, so it didn't there was no depth to any of this. Uh, there was another wee bit of strainer I pulled out down there, so he's gonna do a few more tests at BT man, so I've left him a number if he needs anything else. Chewed up with a digger. There was another wire in there, so I've got one end of it. I went and had my lunch, BT man was having his lunch. Anyway, he's a fast asleep in his van, so I've dug him up so he's got both ends of it. There was a strainer just in there and it had a massive big concrete bit to it, so I obviously nicked this when I was digging away at it. Never known a machine that you can cause so much destruction so quickly, especially with a um, delinquent operator in the, at the seat. Anyway, I'll leave that there for BT man who's fast asleep. <laughs> There we go. Boy's just gonna put a joint in there. Job's a good one. He's actually gonna put a wee um, box so we know exactly where it is and I'll just flush it with the grass. It's gonna be a grass verge here that'll cut with the more. Good to get some lovely weather to pick some daffodils. This is where we're tarring. We're just going for it. Tarring down here, um, all the way down here. We're not doing any of that because it's all right. And then quite a bit down there at the main car park because it gets the brunt of the traffic. This end of the car park, so today is Tuesday and it's 1.30, so during the week, not too much traffic on this. On the weekend, this bit's full, but far less traffic than down there. Like down there, that bit's full all the time, kind of. There's some new bits. A gas salamander, that's what that is. That is for the farm shop, so um, the new bit of kitchen we've put in, you've seen a few days ago, that's one piece for it, and obviously there's a new oven going in, purple fan. Oven, oven's mega expensive. Yeah, so day three of the cycling. Crawford's after farming updates, but I don't know much about farming. I think we're in an olive grove. I think they've rolled the ground, stop anything else coming through apart from the trees. And I think there's been a fire at some point, control fire up to about six foot high. Again, I guess just stop other stuff growing through or maybe is helps with trees, I don't know anyone know anything about olives or whatever these are. Crawford's fun, skate 10, Cammy goes to Corfu. We're flying along again this morning, still big farmland. Over the hill towards uh, Cañeres and then down to Cadiz on the coast. Big cereal crop here. Uh, bits of vineyard, almonds as well, which is a new one. But yeah, big green cereal crop. Toro Loco on the skyline, pretty cool, big boy. Big set of uh, cojones. Crawford, but there's a statue for you. Running there with Percy, taking him for a run. Nice. Hola, Ferms Dos Crawford. Que pasa? Guess who just got hey. there today? Bang on the money.